What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2022 Honda HRV, courtesy of Apple Honda in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I'm in this one today because this is an affordable SUV by Honda with all wheel drive, which is a very good thing. Seeing as I live in Pennsylvania, we get quite a bit of snow here from time to time. Also, here's the best part, well above average reliability rating by Consumer Reports, which is the very highest reliability rating that they give out. It's very hard to come by these days. So that is quite impressive, of course, as well. And so in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, ride quality, steering feel, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there are several different trim levels for the HRV. First one being the LX starting at $21,420. Sport, which is the one we have today, starting at $23,370. EX for $24,620 and lastly the EXL for $26,220 and by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive simply add $1,500 then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the HRV is going to be the same powering this little beast is going to be a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 141 horsepower at 6500 rpm 127 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,300 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters if you go with the sport trim level and up, meaning the LX trim level is not going to give you those paddle shifters. But red line is going to come in at 6,700 RPM, zero to 60 time, 8.6 seconds for the front wheel drive, 9.5 seconds for the all wheel drive, which quite honestly doesn't sound very impressive on paper, but we will be doing that acceleration test here in a little bit. But MPG numbers coming in at 28 in the city, 34 in the highway for the front wheel drive, 27 city, 31 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in the hrv i did want to mention to you guys there are actually two different driving modes one of them being a sport mode which is where you just slide the shifter all the way to the back and it did immediately downshift for me so it is going to hold the rpms at a much higher level giving you more power on demand but there is also an econ button which is its own driving mode it is bright green it is just by the driver's left knee essentially what those things will do is adjust things like the shift points the throttle response and the climate control output as well. Say for example, if I have the air conditioning on right now, which I do, if I were to hit that econ button, it's actually going to dial back that AC a little bit, giving you a little better fuel efficiency. So gotta mention it. But anyways, now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first. Keep in mind, it is a CVT, so it's not going to be traditional shifting because it's a CVT, but still, let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, you guys, here's the paddle shifter test. Hey, cool they're actually quick i mean definitely not a quick acceleration there but i wasn't really trying but having said that the paddle shifters are quick so if you want to have a little bit of fun with them it might be worth it because they are kind of quick reacting and you don't always get that so i actually don't mind them but now let's get back full control to the hrv here let's find yet another straightaway let's put this acceleration to the test and let's see how zero to 60 in 9.5 seconds really feels all right in three two one Go. Do you have it in that sport mode, by the way? It sounds like a CVT. <laughs> All right, it's not the quickest thing in the world. Um, Honda, you definitely gotta throw maybe a turbocharger on this thing, but having said that, if you do that, I'm sure the reliability is going to suffer slightly. So there is the trade-off. I think that is the trade-off. It's not the quickest thing in the world, but you are going to get incredible reliability possibly because of that. So also wanted to mention though, there is a ring around the speedometer here front and center. If you're driving more eco-friendly, it's going to show up in green. And if you're flooring it, it is going to show up in white. So it's kind of a driving indicator at any given time, kind of letting you know how fuel efficient you were driving at any time. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anyways, 
to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 11.5 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.1 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes that is going to come in at an impressive 114 feet that is an incredible stopping distance you guys and just for giggles since nobody is behind us let's hit the brakes that feels great honestly it's definitely on the firmer side of things it is not a soft braking feel so i absolutely love that it immediately brings you to a stop which is a good thing especially if you got kids in the back or something you want to be able to come to a quick stop if you need to so the braking feel the braking statistics is amazing and just for comparison's sake you guys 60 to zero stopping distance typically in suvs comes in in the upper 120s if not 130 so 116 feet is beautiful but anyways then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back it's going to differ whether or not you go with the front wheel drive or the all-wheel drive for the front wheel drive you're going to get a torsen beam rear axle for the all-wheel drive you're going to get a dd on rear suspension so a little bit better suspension setup if you go with the all-wheel drive configuration so i didn't want to mention that but not only that you get a front stabilizer bar with a front wheel drive but you get front and rear stabilizer bars if you were to go with that all-wheel drive configuration so yet again a substantial difference between the front wheel drive and the all-wheel drive so to sum all of that up you guys you're going to get not only a smoother ride but better handling as well if you go with the all-wheel drive configuration that's essentially what that means but overall as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine i've had absolutely no issues i'm on a very smooth road right now which is kind of surprising seeing as hanover doesn't always get that but ride quality is perfectly fine right now steering feel is brilliant that's one of the first things i noticed and honda always does a very very good job with that quite honestly their steering feels tend to lean on the heavier side of things even without the sport driving mode necessarily adjusting anything there but definitely a nice weight to the steering i'll put it that way as far as cabin noise goes you can definitely hear a good bit of the engine when you really get on it because the cvt and the engine is very very noisy in this thing that's only when you really really hit the gas but other than that as far as wind noise goes it's perfectly fine actually even for a compact suv like the hrv you usually expect a little bit of wind noise but you're really not getting it here in this one so i do appreciate that and touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back and with this type of shape you really shouldn't have any issues there anyways but that about routes out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 honda hrv all right and so here she is you guys the new 2022 honda hrv finished in modern steel metallic in case anybody was curious of our exterior color name but let's go ahead and start up front on this one up front to the sides there you will find projector beam halogen headlights coming standard for every single trim level across the board automatic feature of course coming with them meaning when it starts to get dark and at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there fog lights down below you guys can see them they will come on the sport trim level and up and so therefore we do have them today definitely like them they make this thing look a lot better up front in my personal opinion another cool little added touch here to our sport trim level you guys can see this added front lip here finished in gloss black that is going to be specific to the sport trim level meaning it is the only trim level that is going to get this added front lip so did want to mention that i think it looks pretty darn good up there but anyways actually about rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the hrv all right so now since we are around to the side of this one roof rails coming with the sport trim level and up you guys can see them finished in aluminum up top there chrome window surrounds coming standard on all trim levels but the sport because we kind of have a mixture of body colored and gloss black accents around those windows power adjustable body colored side mirrors come standard for all trim levels but the sport because yet again the sport trim level is going to be finishing those side mirrors in a gloss black heated with integrated turn signals then for the side mirrors coming with the ex and exl trims if you wanted that but one of the coolest things about the hrvs you guys can probably see here towards the back you kind of have hidden door handles on those rear doors because they're they're black and they're incorporated into that back end there so you almost can't even tell that they're there because they're not actually on the door bottom part here they're actually integrated into the door so i thought that was pretty cool that's how those rear passengers are actually going to get inside of that one but rear privacy glass coming standard on the sport trim level and up and then taking a look at the wheel configurations 17 inch silver painted alloys coming with the lx 17 inch machine finish alloys coming with the ex and exl and then 18 inch matte black alloys coming with the sport and that is currently what you guys are looking at of course but pretty much rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the hrb all right so 
since we are round to the back here starting up top body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with the integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper of course led tail lights actually coming standard for every single trim level across the board gotta love that of course you will get some all-wheel drive badging there on the right if you were to go with the all-wheel drive configuration and just underneath of everything there you do have a gloss black rear bumper specific to the sport of course but just underneath all of that a single exhaust outlet and you do get the chrome tip if you go with the sport trim level end up that's the only way you're going to get it so no chrome tip on the lx but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip <laughs> And so now since we are around back of the HRV, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a manual tailgate for every single trim level across the board. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 23.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, you can of course fold those rear seats down. It is a 60-40 split, bumping that up to 57.6 cubic feet then. Also within that cargo area, you can find some tie down anchors. There is some cargo lighting. There is actually, if you left up underneath of the cargo floor, there is a spare tire under there as a opposed to the fix a flat in case anybody was curious there are no grocery bag hooks but you can actually find a 12 volt power outlet back there which i thought was pretty cool but then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 39.3 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there also for those rear passengers they will find a 12 volt power outlet just underneath that there is a single cup holder in case you were curious no rear center armrest with cup holders unfortunately but the very best part about the hrv which also also was on the fit but of course the fit no longer being produced here in the u.s but magic seats that is one of the coolest features essentially the way they work is you just simply lift up underneath of the seat you press it back and then you fold the bar down once you fold the bar down that is the mechanism that actually locks them in place so that they don't go anywhere and you can of course do it on both sides so if you have maybe a great dane or a massive that is going to be the most comfortable position more than likely for them so they can actually stand up back there if they wanted to and also lay down so Anyways, it is a ton of space back there with the Magic Seats. I absolutely love that feature, especially for the size of this SUV. It's a wonderful thing. But anyways, then make our way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating does come standard. Heated front seats coming with the EX and EXL trims, and then leather seating coming with the EXL. But overall, seats are decent. They're not too bad, not the most comfortable seats. That, of course, goes to Lexus F Sport seats, but they certainly will get the job done, so no issue there then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is actually going to be leather wrapped for the sport trim level and up otherwise it's going to be wrapped in urethane for the lx trim level and then making our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the uh, key here it is a honda logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock it that button to pop the rear hatch but it is all keyless entry with a push button start if you go with the ex or exl otherwise for the LX or the Sport trim like we have today, it's gonna to be that old school turnkey start. So having said that, all I am going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and turn the key. And so once started up, when it comes to that gauge configuration, tachometer all the way to your left, speedometer large and in charge, and front and center to the right there's going to be a small digital portion which will display things like trip a trip b the time of the day outside temperature of course and your fuel information as well so overall it's pretty much everything you could possibly want on the gauges and again there's that ring around the speedometer which shows you how you're driving at any given time which i was a big fan of but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality power moonroof is going to come on the ex and exl so therefore we don't have it today sport pedals aka aluminum pedals are going to come on the sport trim level which i thought was pretty cool automatic climate control coming with the ex and exl otherwise you're going to get the manual climate control like you're looking at right now auto dimming rear view mirror coming with the exl trim level only then there is an electromechanical parking brake just behind the shifter but another really cool feature i liked about the cup holders because that is what you get right behind the electromechanical parking brake is it's adjustable dependent upon how large your beverage is perhaps so there's actually a little button within the cup holders that you can press that kind of raise it up a little bit that kind of give you a different level so if you have maybe a shorter drink you could press it but if you had maybe a larger bottle don't press it and you got a much deeper cup holder within that so i thought that was pretty cool and just behind that 
there is probably the tiniest storage within a center armrest I have ever seen. It's very cute, I guess you could say. <laughs> but anyways, one of the best parts, yet again, up front at least, is just underneath the shifter and all the center console stuff, there is hidden storage with rubberized storage at the bottom. And you also have a 12 volt power outlet within there and two USB charging ports as well, which is pretty cool. So that's essentially where you're gonna put your phone and the USB charging port to hook your phone up for the Android Auto Apple CarPlay. And it's all out of the way, so it's not gonna clutter up anything, which I personally appreciate. So I think that's pretty darn cool. But anyways, having now mentioned that, let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display. Five inch LCD screen coming with the LX trim level. Where you really wanna be at though is the sport trim leveling up. That is going to give you this seven inch color touchscreen display. It does come standard with Bluetooth and audio streaming as well as Android Auto Apple CarPlay. With a five inch screen, you don't get Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So I wanna emphasize that because that is actually going to give you free navigation displayed up on the infotainment screen as long as you have a smartphone, which is pretty darn cool. I use that all the time. And you have some cool clock wallpapers in typical Honda fashion like they always do up there as well. And you can check out your radio information as expected. And when it comes to the sound systems, there are different sound systems depending upon which trim level that you go with. So four speakers and 160 watts for the LX, four speakers and 180 watts for the sport trim level, that's the one we have of course, and then six speakers and 180 watts for the EX and EXL. And so having said that, let's go ahead and test out our four speaker sound system that we have here today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Well, there you get a little bit of country music for you, but yeah, it's definitely not the very clearest or most bass in the sound system I've ever heard. But then again, that song didn't really give you a whole lot of bass anyways. That was like country from back in the 70s or 80s or something. But yeah, it's not the best sound system I've ever heard, of course, but it should get the job done. But last thing I want to mention to you guys is when you do put the HRV in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera. Not the very clearest rear view camera out there, but there are a few different views it can give you. There is a wide angle view. There's also a view just below where you're at and your standard rear view camera as well, which is always it's going to lead us into safety and so to start front side and side curtain airbags do come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers your children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but if you were to go with that ex or exl trim you will get honda sensing the other trims don't get it but honda sensing is going to include a collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise control lane keep assist forward collision warning and lane departure warning then as well and the EX and EXL, not a part of Honda Sensing, but it's also going to add to that Honda Lane Watch and automatic high beams then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the HRV, incredible reliability when it comes to consumer reports at least. So that pretty much speaks for itself. You can easily see this vehicle going over 200,000 miles. So that's definitely a good thing. Magic seats are absolutely wonderful. I think more vehicles out there should have that. I think every SUV should have that. I think that would be great, but there aren't a whole lot of SUVs, if any right now that have that. So I do love that feature. And this is an affordable all wheel drive vehicle for Pennsylvania specifically specifically because we get snow all the time so all-wheel drive is definitely a huge perk if you live here in PA so I love that it's affordable when it comes to constructive criticism uh, as far as the tech goes I feel like Honda has been using the same infotainment screen for I don't know 10 years now or something I think it's about time to update the tech a little bit that would be nice also digital gauges would be pretty darn sweet as well it doesn't have to come standard on all trims I mean it can like the Volkswagen Taos but even if they just put it on the very upper trim level that would be perfectly fine with me so the ultimate question comes down to and i'll let you guys comment below in the answer to this one but do you buy this one now or do you wait for the potential redesign in 2023 because rumor has it that is when the hrv is going to be redesigned for the 2023 model year aka next year so buy now or wait for that one let me know down below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold